And the, so I'll call the meeting to order. And the first item is the Pledge of Allegiance. So please say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Next is a roll call. Madam Superintendent, can you call the roll? Trustee Chapman? Here. President Honeychurch? I'm here. Trustee Cara? Here. Trustee Martin? Here. Trustee Thurston? Here. Trustee Voice? Here. And Trustee Young? Okay, may not be here yet. We do have a quorum. Thank you. So there have been a has been a change on the agenda, which is item 13C, a new confidential supervisor position uh, has been pulled from the agenda. So the next item is item four, which is approval of the agenda. And I'll entertain a motion from, I'll just choose at random, Mike Martin to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda with the revision. And is there a second by uh, Trustee Chapman? I second. Right. Any comments? If not, uh, please call the roll. Trustee Voice. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Cara. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. And I don't think Trustee Young has joined us yet. So motion passed. Right. So the next item is item five, which is comments from members of the public regarding closed session. Are there any comments on that? There are none. Right. So we'll now move into a closed session. I'll adjourn the regular meeting and we'll move into closed session. <clears throat> We're good. So we'll reconvene the regular meeting. <clears throat> and I'm reporting action in closed session. There was no action taken in closed session. And now we're at uh, item nine, comments from members of the public. Uh, Superintendent President Espinino Noe, do we have any comments from members of the public? Uh, I don't believe we do, no. Well, that's disappointing. So uh, the next item is reports, reports, Associated Students, Tate Allen. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so we're ready for your report on the Associated Students. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having me, everybody. Uh, my name is Tate, and I'm the Governing Board Senator here at uh, Solano Community College. So our report for today is, uh, we'll start off with Calvin Chan. Our former legislative advocate has been appointed as the student trustee as of February 2nd. Um, the adoption of the diversity, equity, and inclusion, inclusion resolution has uh, taken place, also known as DEI, by the way. So when you hear me say DEI, that's what I'm referring to. Um, on December 8th of last year, the Associated Students of Solano College adopted the diversity, equity, and inclusion resolution for SCC from the Student Senate for California Community Colleges. So the ASSC will follow through to promote DEI through our student concerns committee by hosting student forums to amplify student voices and experiences uh, to our college administration. Uh, we established connections with the Student Equity Success Council, Minority Coalition and the Academic Senate. And the ASSC has passed a motion requesting that a campus climate survey be posted for students to participate in for the spring 2021 semester. The goal of the survey is to assess student experiences in the classroom and on campus. Uh, the ASSC sponsor the resolution, the creation of natural relief fund. On January 26th, the ASSC sponsored a resolution, the creation of a natural relief fund. And this resolution is in partnership with the SSCCC and the Chancellor Office to provide economic assistance to California community college students uh, affected by natural disasters. 
Our latest update for the Student Concerns Committee is the purpose of this committee is to collaborate on ways to address student concerns and to promote well-rounded education by hosting open discussions and by inviting all SCC students to voice their concerns and opinions. The committee is also exploring the idea of developing a peer mentorship program to assist students with navigating the Solano resources. And we hope to give back, we, we hope to have the support of faculty to provide support and mentorship for the students of all backgrounds. Uh, another active role is the uh, activities committee. So the, uh, our latest update with that is in assistance in assisting in the promotion of Black History Month by advertising the planned events on our social media pages, as well as sharing infographics about black leaders to bring awareness of the history of the month. And finally, our uh, inner club council updates, our ICC. Uh, we have eight clubs on campus and the ICC meets on the first and third Thursday of the month at 12. And then I have a, I have a list of the clubs here if you'd like to hear them. And uh, that's all for my update. All right. Thank you, Mr. Allen. So any questions of the student? Well, the Associated Student Representative? Mike Martin. Mike, you have to unmute yourself. Could I hear the list of the clubs on campus? Absolutely. Um, the Philippinex American Student Union, the Entrepreneurship Club, the Human Collective, uh, Robotics Club, the Rotaract Club, the Solano Class of Nursing 2021, uh, the Solano Class of Nursing 2022, and Women's Bible Study Fellowship. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, any other questions? If not, thanks very much for your report. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next item is uh, the Academic Senate Report. Um, Hi. Yeah. Yes, good evening. Go okay, good evening, um, Board of Trustees, President Honeychurch and Superintendent President Esposito Noy. The Academic Senate endorsed Senator Paul Heide's nomination of Andrew McGee Automotive Technology Faculty for the Stanback Stroud Diversity Award. This award seeks to honor committed faculty who consistently rise to meet the challenges of our students. This prestigious award acknowledges an individual or group that is exceptional in contributing to the advancement of intercultural harmony, equity, and campus diversity at their college. Mr. McGee was nominated for his outreach work and support of students in the Automotive Technology Program. The Academic Senate is pleased to announce that Dr. Tony Zidko, part-time political science professor and more recently the interim dean of external programs, has been awarded the ASCCC's Hayward Award, a statewide award for excellence in teaching. We congratulate him. This is the second um, part-time faculty from Solano Community College to win this um, prestigious award. I met with the Associated Students of Solano College on January 26th and February 2nd to further discuss the 25 action items that resulted from the Senate's joint meeting with administrators, Student Equity and Success Council, the Minority Coalition, and the Associated Students of Solano College. You might recall this list was mentioned in Dean Neely's presentation two weeks ago. As a result, we are committed to professional development for faculty regarding ways to work with students to create classroom policies um, to let students participate in that process. And um, we're also gonna hold a flex session, um, which will be led by myself, Alex Castaneda, who is the ASSC advisor and a student. So we're gonna invite a student in to lead a flex session with us on Discord, which is a communication um, platform and in hopes of increasing communication among and between students as well as students and faculty. The ASSC is developing a peer mentor program and I committed the Academic Senate to helping them incorporate a faculty student mentor component when they are ready. In addition, with our Guided Pathways initiative, I believe that we can um, provide for students more of what they are asking for um, such as opportunities, additional opportunities uh, to interact with faculty to meet and collaborate with faculty. 
I'm meeting this Friday with the Guided Pathways Steering Committee um, and VP Cooper to define roles and responsibilities for the Guided Pathways faculty coordinators, um, which will, I hope, in turn, uh, lead to some of the outcomes uh, and actions that the students are looking for. Um, and that is my report. Thank you. Thanks very much for your report. And are there any questions? Apparently not. You've accomplished that. So thank you very much. All right, take care. We'll move on to the College Governance Council and the Superintendent's Report. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, College Governance uh, Council has is reviewing the ADT, the Associate Degree for Transfer Reciprocity Procedures. Uh, once approved, I'll bring to the board um, as an information item, as it is a procedure uh, that we're required to put in place, and it allows uh, the community colleges to accept each other's um, courses and units identified as eligible for the ADT degree at all of the California community colleges. Um, for my SP report, I want to um, let everyone know that um, we are still celebrating Black History Month. We had an event today uh, facilitated by one of our alumni, uh, Kenya Selvin, who's a licensed clinical social worker. Uh, on political trauma and self-efficacy, reclaiming our progress. And so we have three more sessions. The next one on February 22nd with um, our adjunct faculty member, uh, Dr. Damani Fisher, talking about reconstruction. Um, we also are going to have food distribution again uh, this week for our students here on campus. Um, and we are gonna see how that works out to provide that food uh, in essentially packaged for students and prepared and handed out to them. Um, as you know, we've been working closely with the Contra Costa Solano Food Bank to partner with them on making sure our students uh, have access to food. Uh, so that will be happening tomorrow. Uh, I shared with the college campus the letter from uh, Sergeant Tom, or uh, from the Sheriff's Office, um, Sheriff Tom Ferreira regarding the recent allegations that have been in the news about uh, two of the members of the Solano County Sheriff's Office. Um, and as a part of our commitment to our diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, we will probably be putting together a group to look at ways in which we can uh, provide safety and uh, make sure that the campus is a safe place for everyone and look at some options that might be available. There are many colleges that are looking at options to um, some of the more traditional policing uh, that we've been used to and considering what some other options might be available. So we want to put something together over this next year and bring something forward to the board for review. And that is the end of my report. Any, any questions of the superintendent, president? Not thanks for your report. So that brings us to the consent agenda. As you know, all matters listed on the, under the consent agenda are considered to be routine and are and are enacted in one motion. There's no uh, discussion on the items unless uh, members of the board or the public request items to be discussed or removed. So uh, can I have a motion to approve from uh, say trustee Chapman? Yeah, but Ms. Cha trustee Chapman? Yes, I, I, I could read your lips, but I think you said you move approval. Uh, yes, sir, you read them correct. All right. I'll move for the trustee approved. voice, trustee I'll voice, would you that. second? All right, it's been moved and seconded. Please call the roll. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Cara. Aye. Motion passes. There are no items removed from the consent agenda. We move on to item 13, which are nine consent agenda items, action items. Uh, the first of which is 13A. I'll call on Celia Espinito Noy for regarding re resignations to retire. Thank you. Uh, yes, we have uh, two individuals who have submitted their uh, resignation to retire. Uh, one is a faculty member, a longtime faculty member in nursing, Glenn Burgess. And the other is our classified staff member, Donna Murphy. Um, and I don't know if uh, Dr. Williams has um, a statement prepared regarding um, our nursing instructor, Glenn Burgess, 
And if our VP Rob Diamond has a statement regarding Donna Murphy, our accountant. Uh, thank you. We did not receive a statement uh, for Glenn Burgess, but I will just tell you, uh, many of you know him. As you can see, he was a longtime faculty member in the nursing program, longtime director of nursing for that program, which is a very, um, very important job uh, working with the community. And, and um, he has helped graduate many, many of our fine nursing students over the years. Glenn, I believe, is looking forward uh, to retirement on his farm, and we do wish him the very best. Mr. Diamond, just a, a brief uh, appreciation for Donna Murphy. She's been with the district for, I believe, uh, 13, 13 and a half years. She has served in capacities ranging from entry level clerical to uh, she's currently an accountant. Many of you don't know Donna because she's one of those uh, diligent classified employees that work behind the scenes. She's always been very dedicated to her work, to doing an excellent job. I've never seen anybody work quite as hard and fast as Donna does. And so her contribution to Solano will be sorely missed. Right, thank you. So now we need a motion. I'm uh, calling on uh, Trustee Young. Can you make the motion to accept the retirements? I move that we accept the retirement submitted to the board for approval. Trustee Martin, would you second? Second. All right, so moved and seconded. Please call the roll. Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Motion passes. All right, thank you. There was an item removed. Was it this one? That... Yes. Yes, all right. Item, the next item then is um, finance and administration of a resolution regarding the establishment of the non resident and international student fee. President Honey Church, if I could note, um, 13C was removed, but 13B, as in boy, is still on the agenda. Sorry. Thank you. So we, sorry, we'll move back to 13B. It's a new confidential supervisor position. Uh, is there a motion to approve this position? Trustee, Trustee Thurston? I move for approval of item 13B. We, we have a second from Trustee Chapman. Uh, I'll second, but also, if I may correct, uh, do a correction, it's not an approval of the position, but the position description. Correct. Okay. And approval I said, of the, the description. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. I move for approval of 13B description. All right. And All right. I second it. Does that meet the stipulation? Thank you. All right. All right. Please call the roll. I have a quick Martin. question. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 Go ahead. Trustee Boyce. I just want to, I just want to get our superintendent uh, could align us here. How does, how does this new position fit? in what we currently have uh where where is is this replacing overall or is this a uh, new you know where, where is this fit yes yeah, so over the um when i first arrived here five years ago we had a director of outreach and admissions and a supervisor of records okay since that time we've made quite a few staffing changes we now have a dean of uh, admissions and records and financial aid who also oversees veterans outreach, uh, recruitment. Um, and so that's a, a pretty robust dean position. Part of what we wanna do is see if we can uh, add a supervisor position so that we have more direct engagement with staff in admissions and records in particular. Um, one of the things that, that has happened over the years is the requirements of admissions and records have changed significantly in particular when we talk about um, associate degrees for transfer and awarding degrees at a rate that will allow us to um, maximize the student-centered funding formula. And so there, there's quite a bit of work that has to be done here. Uh, in addition to supervising staff, there are a number of IT efforts that we need to implement, some software that we need to implement in order to be able to do awarding much more quickly. And so we felt that um, this would be a position that would add 
some capacity to admissions and records, and then our dean can also focus on financial aid. You may remember that we have not filled the director of financial aid position. And so our dean has been spending quite a bit of time there as, long, as well as with outreach. So that's why we're recommending this position description. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions? If not, I think we're ready to call the roll on the item. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. Motion passes. Now we'll move on to item 13D, which is a resolution establishing the non-resident and international student fees. So um, BP Rob Diamond is a leader on this. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Trustee Honey Church. Uh, once a year, it's time for the board to review what we charge for non-resident fees. Uh, just as a reminder, most of the cost of serving uh, resident students is supported by state taxpayers through state subventions and property taxes. The enrollment fees paid by resident students covers only a fraction of the cost of education. The state does not support non-resident students and they're therefore required to pay fees to cover their full cost of education. Each year we review our fees. We collaborate with other districts in the region and come back with a recommendation for uh, next year's fees. Our current fees are $290 per unit for non-residents plus an extra $10 for capital outlay fee. We're recommending an increase for next year to $304 per unit, plus $11 uh, per unit in capital outlay fees. That number is very close to, but slightly below the state average and below uh, all of the neighboring districts. So we're recommending your approval of non-resident fees of $304 per unit and $11 per unit in capital outlay fee for 21-22. Right. Do I have a motion to approve from, say, Trustee Martin? I'll make the, mo make the motion to approve resolution number 2021-16, establishment of non-resident international student fees. We have a second from Trustee Voice. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any questions or comments? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Aye. Voice? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item is item 13E, which is approval of award to Selway Machine Tool Company for lathe machine and robot package for the Fairfield campus for the School of Applied Technology. So may I have a motion to approve this item from uh, say Trustee Cara? Yes, um, I'll approve, I motion to approve 13E, please. All right, and Trustee Young, would you second? Yes, I, I second the motion. Moving and second. Any questions or comments regarding this item? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next is item F, which is approval of renewable energy consultant services pool of firms. So starting on my, my left as I look at the screen, Trustee Chapman, would you be willing to make a motion to approve this item? Yes, I move for the approval of item 13F. And Trustee Martin, would you second? Second. All right, any discussion? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Cara? 
Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Item, Item G, G is next, Measure Q spending plan update number 21. Is there a presenter on this or? Uh, yes, there is. We have uh, our executive bonds manager, Lucky Lofton, and Priscilla Mecliarchuleta from Kitchell, who can present on this. Uh, I have provided uh, you with uh, some additional resources, um, but we are happy to take questions or they can present uh, some of the highlights. Okay, Mr. Lofton. Yes. Highlights. Highlights. Okay. Yeah, just let me begin by saying that uh, in 2013, when the facilities master plan was first completed, that was a, a, a fantastic plan, very well conceived and very well thought out. That plan is probably a 50 year plan. It, uh, it, does, it actually has 24 to 25 buildings that would be built by this plan. It also even looked at purchasing more land beyond what we already own. And um, that plan has been carried out thus far for these first uh, seven or eight years. And we've accomplished four new buildings and we've completely remodeled one building, the theater building. Um, so since then, the strategic plan has been uh, revised and the new facilities, or not a new, but the update to the facilities master plan is being completed at the direction of the board and under the leadership of Dr. Esposito Noy. Um, we have brought to you an update to the bond spending plan that is based on that information. This bond spending plan is focused on the next three years. Uh, we just recently went out for a $30 million tranche. And so we are taking the data and the information from that facilities master plan and revising our focus for these next three years. I would remind you too that this is our 21st uh, bond spending plan update. It can be and will be revised many, many times after this. So this is, this is uh, the guidance that we've received from Measure Q Steering Committee and from the leadership of the president. So let me share this screen item uh, for you and we can go down the list of items and see where, what questions you may have. Um, hopefully I'll get the right screen. You should be seeing this spreadsheet. Um, this is a fairly long list. So if you want me to jump, um, I'm happy to jump. But starting with the top item, the agriculture horticulture project on the Fairfield campus was originally budgeted at 2 million. We are seeking to reduce that by 629,000. You can see in the notes that we've spent one, a little more than 1.3 million. And uh, we, don't, we don't foresee any uh, additional work out there over the next three years. Um, going to our science and math building phase two, that is, is uh, slated to be a renovation of building 300, the old science building. The original budget for that project was 8 million. We believe that we can reduce that by 5 million and reduce the scope from a complete gut of the building to something far less. Uh, we've reviewed this with Dr. Esposito Noy, and we believe that the value to the district is in having those science classrooms that we can bring back into use at any time, and we can continue to use the building for classroom use as we move forward. The air conditioning systems and the control systems still need to be addressed. And primarily this will be a minor facelift inside the building and addressing the air conditioning and, and the building automation controls. Moving to performing arts, phase two, it has been long designed for a costume shop to be built attached to our theater building. We've spent $33,000 out of this budget in swing space as we've moved the costume shop around over the years. Uh, we would like to reduce that by $1.6 million from 13.7 to 12, little over $12 million. Uh, we believe that that is still sufficient funds for the scope of work 
that we need to accomplish for the theater's costume shop. As we look at the career tech building for Fairfield, we've identified 1600 and 1800 as needing uh, remodels. This is primarily the cosmetology, the welding shop, um, other areas uh, in, in building 1800. We believe that that will need more money than was originally budgeted, the, the 3 million. So we're looking to increase that to 4.5 million. But I, again, as we enter into these projects, studies will be done, clarity will be gained, and we will bring back to the board any increases or decreases that we see these projects needing. These are our initial thoughts on these projects for the next three years. Building 1400 um, has always been uh, something that we've wanted to remodel. We know the kitchen is a complete uh, replacement project. We don't know if there'll be more work that we should do for the student center. So we've slated $4 million to explore the scope of work. And we'll be looking to understand if we're building a, a commercial kitchen back into that building, or if we'll be doing something that has ac an academic component to it in the way of a culinary program uh, facilitation in that, in that remodel. Uh, we currently have not spent any money. It hasn't been approved by the board. Uh, on campus housing, we're looking to initiate a study to uh, advance uh, on campus housing. Uh, we're looking for a public private partnership. That seems to be the way that uh, other community colleges are going. We know that Napa College just, just over the hill has already, uh, is already under construction with a, a new student housing facility. Um, uh, the, the board has approved a schematic study for Chuck Early, uh, our Early Learning Center, the Child Care Building. We're looking to expand that. Uh, the study is complete. We believe that we understand the scope of that project and we are looking for $2.5 million to um, purchase a pre-manufactured building that we would be able to set. This is not a portable building. This is something more substantial in the way of a pre-manufactured building that would serve our child care facility. Um, any questions uh, about the Fairfield campus? I have one. Sure. Mr. President, um, we talked about the uh, welding. We had, in the past, we've talked about that being relocated to Vallejo to be part of the automotive center. Uh, is that still in the process? And we're spending money here. Are we going to have to look at this into the future to move down there eventually? Or where are we at with the welding? Well, one of the issues that we noticed in the FMP was that the building 1800 did need quite a bit of work. Um, what we still need to discuss, though, is whether or not moving welding to Vallejo to the Auto Tech Center or to a building next to that um, will be a viable option. Um, but for right now, we still have some um, minor things that we need to do there. Now, we may decide that we want to keep welding here. Um, and that's why this plan, again, is a three-year plan, uh, because there are still some decisions that we need to make about where we might move some of the academic programs, where we would house them. So we still have to, we have to still discuss that. All right. Thank you. I have. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, the costume in performing art building, that was a, a, a heavy discussion back when we when the um, theater was being remodeled. Um, where are you? Where do you see space for that to occur? Uh, that is one of the prime reasons why they've been going to swing spaces um, because there was, uh, I don't think there was um, space at the theater for a I, add on for the costumes. I, I could bring up a, um, an image of the facilities master plan and, and I can show you, but currently it would be on the West, so the, we are currently proposing that a new costume shop be built attached to the building on the west side. This would be on the Sioux Valley Road side of that building. 
Um, I could bring up a site plan uh, where we do show that in the facilities master plan update, if you'd like. Uh, so if I'm if I'm looking at the theater, you're speaking of the left hand side. If you're and looking at, at correct, if you're looking at the front entrance from inside the campus, right. um, it, it would be on the left hand side. Okay. Where the old portables used to be. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? I think that was it. Okay. Can Thank you, you still can you still see my screen? Yes. Okay. I can see. All right. Uh, so moving on to the Vacaville campus. Um, the Vacaville campus uh, building purchase. Um, this would be the annex. Um, we've reduced that by a small amount, two hundred ninety-five thousand. Uh, there's 844,000 that remains for future work and study and completion of the phase two Corbel project. Um, the aeronautics workforce building was originally budgeted for 15 million. As, as you remember, we, we spent a little over $400,000 in a schematic. Uh, I'd have to check my numbers. That might be a little high. Um, we did spend over 900,000 purchasing the, the land, which is part of this 1.375 million. Um, we, we are leaving 709,000 in there for updates to the current uh, hangar and the parking lot expansion project, but we are seeking to reduce that by $12.9 million. Um, the Student Learning Center uh, for the Vacaville campus um, we're seeking to reduce that from 22 million. We're seek it was reduced, by the way, in a prior bond spending plan from 22 to 15.5. We're seeking to reduce that from 15.5 by 14.3 million. There would be 1.2 million left in this. We would be looking to realign our expectations to either partner with the county library system or to repurpose existing space to serve the needs of uh, tutoring and, and library resources uh, at the Vacaville Center. Our uh, facilities master plan update did show that we have a significant amount of square footage considering we've added the annex and the biotech building to the Vacaville campus. We have, um, we have, ex we have ex extra space that we can repurpose for library resources. Um, so there's, there's two avenues, a plan A and a plan B, if you will. Um, but we do believe that we can, uh, this, this budget, instead of building a new building, we can take alternative methods to meet those needs. Currently, the fire training uh, facility in the original plan was planned for, to, for us to purchase more land behind the annex and then build a fire, fire training facility behind the annex. Uh, we have not purchased any additional land behind the annex, and we are looking to reduce that from the 6.25 million, which was reduced from the original seven, by another 5.75 million, leaving 500,000 to remain to repurpose with another agency to study. We've been approached multiple times, by the way, by other fire agencies, and we believe that um, the, the training center rental that, or participation that we have with existing training centers is currently meeting the needs of our program. So any questions about the Vacaville campus? Can you put, oh, go ahead, Sarah Chapman. I am so sorry. Can you put up the diagram um, for the Vacaville campus showing the annex and the um, yeah, the old and the new. Okay. The old and the proposed, and I don't see it on your screen anywhere. Yeah, let me pull it up right here. Can you see this? Yes. So this is, let me see, that's, that's our Fairfield campus. I got to scroll through here. That's our Vallejo campus. Here is the original plan for Vacaville. Vacaville, yes. Right, and you see the annex 
here that I'm circling my mouse over. Right. What is that uh, now that's circled behind the annex? So our property line um, is very tight to our parking lot and runs directly behind our building and it maintains um, uh, a tightness to our parking lot. We do not own any of this land behind here. So these buildings that are shown to be built in the 2013 facilities master plan, these were the, the only conclusion that I can draw is that there was a plan to purchase the parcel behind us in order to build these, the, the fire train building and these fire towers that were slated for that program. Okay, now my, my memory serves me that those, um, the annex behind there, we did have some additional property because SCO had talked to us at one time about wanting to add um, an addition on the back side and then the parking lot off to the left, right, left of the building um, for their uh, a group of special needs students. So that's, so when you say we don't own that property on the back side, we do own a portion of it. Now, this, the reason why I wanted you to bring this up, this was confusing to me. If you go to the 2020 uh, diagram, please. This looks like, really, this looks like 2013. Well, uh, this is our 2020 plan. And I have, I spent, uh, I actually spent quite a bit of time reviewing the SCO plan for that additional building. They had an architect design the addition. Mm -hmm. They sent it to DSA. They had a DSA approved set of drawings. And I sat down with them and we reviewed it. And what the plan showed was an addition, just as you said, an attached building right here off to the right. And they would be encroaching out onto this parking lot area. Um, but since our building was not DSA certified, they couldn't move forward with any work at all. Right. And we, once we got our DSA certification in place, mm -hmm. we, we had additional conversations. And in those conversations, what they said was, is that they no longer had the funds to construct uh, and do the addition to that building. And so they really didn't believe that moving forward with it would be in their, they would be able to. And so we've, we've had additional conversations with them looking to site uh, a building here closer to our campus and close enough to our utilities that we would be able to attach to our power and, and water and sewer so that we would be able to provide them the kind of facility that they are looking to have. So that is part of the new the new plan, but if I'll scroll back up to the to this plan, you'll see right here. This is taken directly from the 2013 facilities master plan. This is in fact the 2013 plan, and in this plan, it, it showed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten buildings plus the uh, towers. And I have pulled all of our parcel maps and collected them. I did that early on just so that I understood all of the properties uh, when I was first hired. And I, I actually could send you a, I put it all together into uh, a series of sheets. And so I could send you all of our parcel maps and the parcel maps that, the, that are recorded with the county show that our property runs very tight to this, this back line. We do not own, nor have we ever owned any of the property behind behind the annex. There's there's literally just a, I don't know, five feet behind the building that we would own. That's fine, Lucky, thank you. Okay. I th thank you, Lucky. Sure. Um, let's see that we were at Vacaville. Uh, if I move on to the Vallejo campus, um, the site improvements was originally 5.1 million. Um, we reduced it in a prior bond spending plan to 2.8 million. We're looking to remove that. And what we found in this 
is that we have done extensive site work on all of our projects and site work is generally included in our work. When you look at the Autotech building, for instance, you see that we did a new parking lot um, and that we did extensive landscaping to that, to that um, entire parcel of uh, where Autotech is sited. You'll also see that with the theater, the science building, biotech, with the library, we, we do all of our site work within the project. We don't believe that we need a separate budget just for site work. So we'd like to remove that completely. Um, again, we have a situation with the 22 million at Vallejo for a, an LRC building. We'd like to reduce that similar, similarly to uh, Vacaville. Uh, because we do look to partner with the county or to repurpose existing space uh, in, in coordination with the updated facilities master plan. Uh, we, we are looking at the, uh, a career tech building and early college high school building um, that was originally slated for 21 million, 21.9. It was reduced to 19.8 in, in previous bond spending plans. We'd like to reduce it a little bit more to 18.2 million. We believe that that would be sufficient for a career tech early college high school uh, building, which again, we're making these adjustments. Uh, and, I, and as I said at the beginning, this is for our three year plan. Um, we are looking specifically to spend the 30 million, but we're making multiple adjustments to multiple projects even though I don't believe within the next three years we'll be doing the early college high school building. As an example, um, we are making adjustments to the overall plan um, and hopefully these are in line with the updated data and information from the facilities master plan and have met with approval from and with the superintendent president and our measure Q steering committee as we've reviewed this with them many, many times. Um, and then finally, we have infrastructure improvements that we, we feel that we really do need to move forward on. Um, uh, we're looking right now at um, the possibility of doing as much as a five megawatt solar installation. Uh, this is the, the, the general budget that we would need for such a project. Uh, we don't know. We're in the process of bringing on a consultant to, to begin the process of studying our energy consumption and our energy needs, how much we would need to generate to minimize our $100,000 a month uh, electric, electrical bill. We won't be able to zero that out because we have to pay for what are called transportation costs. Those are the costs for actually having the cables connected to the grid. Uh, that PG&E maintains, but we do look to reduce that substantially and we would produce all of our own power is ultimately the goal, bringing us to, um, to zero purchasing of power. Uh, so that's the goal. It may not need 13 million. We may not need a five megawatt station. Uh, maybe it's four, maybe it's three, but as we find that information out, we'll reduce this budget or we'll seek the board's approval if we are looking to generate revenue with production greater than what we need. But that's the type of project this will begin life as. Um, we also need to address substations three, four, and five. You'll recall that we've already replaced substations one and two. Uh, we, <laughs> we replaced substation one just in the nick of time. As you know, the college was experiencing multiple blackouts as substation one was failing. Uh, substation three, four, and five are all critical. If we lose three or four, uh, the campus would go down. I think that we would be fine if we lost five as it serves the athletic fields, the football field, the baseball field, it's fairly small, uh, but we, we cannot allow three and four to continue beyond the 50 years or so that they've already been in use. So we really feel that this is a, a very important infrastructure project. And in addition, the pool itself is a 50 year old pool. Um, we have a, a failing shell in terms of the inside of the pool, the deck is failing. Uh, we have multiple safety issues that we need to address with our 
uh, chlorine tanks and our other water treatment uh, tanks that are the way that they're built, they don't meet code. So we're gonna have to do a lot of code compliance work to modernize the pool. But the pool is not only important to us academically and in our athletics program, but it's also very important to the community as it does receive a great deal of use. Um, so uh, any questions about our infrastructure project that I could answer? I have a question. One question with Trustee Chapman, go ahead. Thank you. Um, back before the infrastructure improvements, the um, Career Technology Early College High School in Vallejo. Yes. Um, is the Early College High School added to this uh, because we we are encouraging uh, the parents and students to become, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, I know for the program, not our program, but yet we supply space for them. If I understood uh, Dr. Espinosa, uh, yeah, the president superintendent. Um, and so right now we have the Fairfield, uh, uh, Fairfield Sassoon School District at the main campus, and we did we did get a portable and was able to supply them with space. And so, for each of the, of the programs, we we are obligated, so to speak, to provide them space if we go into this uh, partnership to offer the early college high school. So, when we had it going on in Vacaville, we the courses were offered at the Vacaville site for the students and yes. so I'm I'm trying to see we're going to need to build out in Vallejo for a program to be offered we wouldn't have space otherwise to um, to assist that that's correct under under the current configuration of the Vallejo Center or the Auto Tech Center those are the only two places where we have space and at, at least you know pre COVID the Vallejo Center has been heavily used 8am till you know 950 at night and all the classrooms have been occupied so we would not be able to house uh, an early college high school program in the current facilities one of the proposals that I shared back in um, December and 2020 when we were working on the facilities master plan was this idea of partnering with Vallejo Unified where we could um, share the space where they might be interested in a early college high school magnet program focused on career technical education that they could use um, you know Monday through Friday eight to three and then the college would occupy it primarily in the late afternoon and evenings and weekends and creating literally a seamless transition for high school students to move into our college courses in the exact same building. So, so that, that's the concept there. Okay, so the, right. the young people will not be attending classes during the time that our adult students are present no they could still similar to it depends on how the early college high school program is developed once um, we work with vallejo unified so for example it, it may model the fairfield sassoon one which is depending on the grade level uh, students take their high school classes for a certain number of hours each day and then in the afternoon they take one two or three of our college level classes. So the idea is that students would be taking college classes either down at the Vallejo Center down the hill or at the Career Technical Building. And again, we're calling it that for now, but they would be taking our college classes either throughout the day and or moving into our college classes in the late afternoon, early evening. Okay. Um, Thank you. So I think we need to get folks back to, to the focus on what this item actually is, which is the spending plan. For three years. That was three the other years. thing we want to emphasize is that this is for the three years, this is what we're proposing. And as Lucky indicated, there will be more changes to this. And this is not the end of the bond spending plan. This is just for this particular tranche of 30 million. Okay. I'm 
with, with that, that, I would entertain a motion to approve the Measure Q spending plan. plan. I'll, I'll, I'll motion for that and, and also comment that uh, I, I really appreciate that you've, you all have the work you all put into this to shrink wrap it to our facilities master plan and really, really identify what's the next steps. Uh, I, I, have, I have a privilege of serving on the Measure Q community, so I've seen some of this. And I'm really excited about um, looking at becoming uh, more energy efficient and modernizing our energy. That is so crucial right now. So uh, with that, I happily entertain a or motion to approve this. Uh, Do we have a second from Trustee, Trustee Chapman? Chapman? Yes, I second. All right, All right. please call the roll. Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And, thank and thank you, Lucky, for your report on this item, item the previous item. item. Uh, uh, next, next item is item H, contract, contract amendment number two to, to applied materials and engineering, engineering for special inspection services for the library learning resource building. Uh, we have a motion to approve from uh, say A. Marie Young. I move that this item be approved. So Trustee, Trustee Thurston, Thurston, would you second? Second. Any, Any discussion? discussion? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Next item is item Aye. I. Contract, contract approval for, for PB Electric Incorporated for vault lid replacement for the Library Learning Resource Center project. We have a motion to approve by uh, Trustee Chapman. I move for the approval of 13 I. Trustee Martin, would you second? Second. All right. Any questions? questions? Discussion? If not, we call the roll. Oh, uh, Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next is item J. The Request for approval of the curriculum item submitted by the curriculum committee. Uh, the presenter is Vice President David Williams. Uh, thank you, Board President Honeychurch. We are presenting to you these items uh, that were actually passed in the fall. We're just getting these to you now, but this is a, a regular update of the activities of our curriculum committee. All right. We have, we have a motion to approve by Trustee Kara. Would you care to make the motion to approve the curriculum committee matter? Motion to approve 13J, please. Thank you. Thank you. Is, there Is there a second, second from uh, uh, Trustee Chapman? I second. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? questions? Discussion. Discussion? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. We move on now to, to, to tuition, tuition discount, discount agreement between Solano Community, Community College and the California, California Baptist University, University for students, students in the Fast Track to Success program. program. Uh, may we have a motion to approve, approve say, uh, Trustee, Trustee Voice, as probably a Baptist himself. himself. <laughs> I, I will definitely you can decline the honor <laughs> no i'll definitely motion to approve all right, all right. Trustee, trustee martin, martin you second all right. any discussion questions. questions i have a question if i may sure, sure of course it, um i wanted to ask i i looked up the california baptist university and they have a nursing program and I couldn't figure out if it was a four-year program or a two-year program, but it's not one of the listed fast track um, on this. And I was just wondering if someone could answer that, whether 
we could make the nursing program part of it as a fast track, or is there a reason why it was excluded? Trustee, no, I'm not trustee, but Superintendent, President Espinito, no, can you answer that? Yeah, I think VP Williams, who worked with them on this, can address that. Sure. sure. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I will look into that. This was, uh, they, they laid out the programs that our students would be eligible for, but I can certainly look into the nursing program and get back to you on that. Yeah, because then if it's a if it's a four year program, then maybe our two year program can, you know, piggyback into becoming a four year program for our nurses. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, please call the roll. Trustee Cara. Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next, Next item, item is item L, L which, is which is a resolution proclaiming February 2021 as Black History, History Month. Trustee, Trustee Young, Young, would you make a motion to approve this item? I move that this item be approved. Is there a second from Trustee, Trustee Chapman? Chapman? I know she's making, making presentations, presentations on this item herself. herself. I second. Thank you. Right. Any, Any discussion, discussion or comments? If not, if not please call the roll. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. And the next, and the next item, item is a resolution proclaiming March, March which is next month, month as Women's, Women's History Month. month. We, have we have a motion to approve. To approve. Aye. Ah, uh, I, I guess there's a motion from the, the, the representative from Trustee Thurston. Thank you. Is there a is second? second? I'll second that. Out. All right. All right. Trust, second by Trustee Cara. Thank you. Any questions? Any second opinions? Why didn't one of the men make the motion and second it? I would, I would have, have, but you would have, have just shut, shut me up. Me up. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, that's I'm not the chair of that committee. You're not allowed, allowed to. It's, it's against procedure. Anyway, anyway can please you please call, call the roll? Trustee Cara? <laughs> Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Motion passes. All right, All right. thank you and congratulations. congratulations. So, so next item, item is information items and it's uh, uh, the, the annual, annual budget, budget and financial report by Vice President Rob Diamond. Diamond. And, and I only, only want to hear good news. news. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I'll make it brief and good. This is an <laughs> annual report we file with the Chancellor's Office each year. And uh, in all 49 pages, the core message here is uh, the district contains a strong financial position. Revenues and expenses came in within 1% of budget last year. And in fact, our reserves are strong and slightly increased. And uh, bottom line, the district is in an excellent financial position right now. Well, thank you. Any any comments or questions on this item from Rob Diamond, who must be uh, congratulated by becoming or coming in within one percent of the budget, which is damn hard to do. So uh, apparently, no questions. So thank you very much. Next item is announcements. Are there any announcements from our board? Everyone's speechless. Oh, Trustee Chapman. I would just like, I did have an opportunity to sit in today on the presentation for Black History Month. Uh, you know, there was uh, something scheduled for each week. Uh, there's three remaining, I believe, two or three remaining. So I would encourage trustees, administrators, sit in and um, actually might learn or, well, it was, uh, it's very, it was very interactive today. Uh, questions were made. There were uh, individuals contributing to the to the topic at hand. So, if you get a chance, please um, zoom in. All right. 
Thank you. And I know you're the you were the mistress of ceremonies, as they describe you in the newspaper for one of these presentations. Yes, uh, Ackerville will be hosting its very first um, acknowledgement that there are black people living in Ackerville and doing wonderful things. Well, that's that's, that's great. Them. Well, no, they're wise and they're going to give me a hard time. But anyway, uh, they are um, the the city downtown, uh, the city, um, and a couple of other groups are putting on the very first um, recognition of contributions made by Black Americans here in Vacaville. And it's going to take place on Saturday. I was called about a month ago asking if I would MC, and of course, I graciously accepted. Um, and I think it's going to be very nice. It is going to be held at Andrews Park. I will receive all the details, hopefully, but no later than tomorrow. I have the program and all. Um, so because it's at Andrews Park, um, sure social dis distancing will be um, in place. And um, we're recognizing past, present, and future individuals. Um, uh, they mentioned in the article, uh, Lieutenant uh, uh Warren. Um, he passed, but he was an original Tuskegee Airman. He's of the past. And he's at a thrower. Um we have our only um facility in the district named after a black American and uh African American. That's New Zeta Thrower. She is now deceased. Um present is there's two, there's two, um, Denetta Mitchell. She's a, a local writer for the, for the reporter, reporter and Fairfield, I believe. Um, it's being recognized at the future, at the present, along with Risha Slade. Yes, Risha Slade, one of our employees, is being recognized at the present. And she's also the keynote speaker. And then we have a young lady, uh, you might have heard about uh, about her. She attended Wilsey Wood High School, very artistic, and a project that she did, she drew uh, pictures of uh, uh, murals of African Americans, and it was done during the uh, Black History Month several years ago. And even classes after she graduated continued to add to this the archive. And so she is being uh, recognized as a future and she also has her own business and I don't happen to know the name of the business, but you can get a copy of the um, reporter or the Daily Republic and very long, nice, lengthy article was in there. So if you have a chance, you wanna come out and join those of us who fear COVID, come on out. Great, thank, thank you, Trustee okay. Chapman. Thank, Thank you. you for your work. Mm -hmm. Next item is items from the board. Does anyone have an item to contribute? I have an item, if I may. It's Karima. Sure. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that the Solano County School Board Association has a series of lectures or virtual sessions. One is on March 8th, April 19th, or sorry, April I, of course, I've just lost the, um, but the March, the March 8th one is on student equity. Um, and it would really be nice if everyone considered going. I'm gonna be sending you privately the leaflet again. Look at it, any questions, please call me. But I expect to see you guys all there. Thank you. All right, thank you, Trustee Cara. Next item is adjournment. And I'm gonna, going to call on Amory Young, our representative from Kaleo. Thank you. Is there a second? Trustee Martin? Second. All right, moving and seconded. Call the roll. Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Motion passes. All right. Thank you. And that concludes the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good okay. night. Bye. Stay safe.